Hi y'all, bonjour, hola, my name is Trish. If you're new on this channel, welcome. The long awaited time is here. I get to show you how to create the flyer I posted on the community page. Yes, I'm excited just like you. So if you're ready, let's get started. So to begin making this flyer, we first of all want to start by knowing the size of this flyer. If you go to File, New, and then we want to keep our width at 10 and our height at 10. And notice I have my dimensions on inches. My resolution is going to be 300 and I'm going to click on Create. So I'm going to open my window and my folder and then I want to pull in this background. I'm going to drag it into Photoshop and just release. And what I'm going to do, holding the corners, I'm going to rescale it like that. I'm going to double click to deselect. So I'm going to pick up my eraser tool. So once I select my eraser tool, you want to make sure you have the layer selected. And then you want to click on your canvas. It will ask you, do you want to convert this image to smart object? You want to click OK. So once we have that, you want to begin to erase. So I'm going to go back to my folder and I want to select this image. I'm going to drag and drop it into Photoshop. And you want to go back to that layer and you want to take down the opacity so you can begin to see the background color bleeding through. And I'm going to take my eraser tool. I don't want my edges to be so sharp. So make sure you're on the right layer and you click on your canvas. It will ask you to convert your image to smart object. And I'm going to increase my brush head just a little. I want it to be a little bit more bigger. Oops. I'm going to add one more zero. All right. So I'm going to gradually erase. And I don't want it to be so sharp. So that's why I'm doing this. And you can do the same thing right here. Make sure your brush is a little bit away from the edge of the image so you get the smooth transition. You want to click on your top image. And then you want to go to your adjustment and choose gradient. As you can see, my gradient option is from opacity to transparent. And that's what you want to choose. I'm going to double click on my gradient because I want to change the color. So we want to double click on this and we want to change this color to a blue, like a deep blue, something of that sort. I'm going to take it down just a little touch and I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click OK here. Oh, I'm going to go back again because I didn't change this one. And I want the same color. So to match it, you can just click on the corner here so you get the exact color. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click OK here. And when you come to the style, you want to change the style to radar and we want to reverse it. And then we want to increase the scale so we get the color on the outside or towards the edge of our background. So I'm going to do something like this. And then I'm going to add one more adjustment, one more gradient color. So I'm going to click on my adjustment and then add gradient. So this time I'm going to double click and change the color to purple. So we're going to go for this bright purple and I'm going to click. I'm going to change it to a little bit more richer purple like that. And I'm going to click OK. And if you want the exact color is FCO5ED. So you can type that in. I'm going to click OK uh, and notice that the end stop color is black. So you want to leave that on black and I'm going to click OK here and we are going to click OK. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to flip. I'm going to move the purple on the bottom 
and the blue will be on top. So we have something like this. So with my text tool selected, I'm going to click within my canvas and I'm going to reduce this text size for now. I'm going to take it to 70. And I'm going to type in the word worship, but I'm going to type in the first three and I'm going to highlight and I'm going to change the size to 310, 311. And I'm going to, oh, let's make it 312. And then I'm going to move this. I'm going to set it right there. Somewhere like that. So before I, I add the full word, I'm going to double click on the right side of the text on the layers panel. It will open the layer style for me. I want to add a drop shadow. So I'm going to double click on my drop shadow style and I want to just play it with this. So I get a very cool uh, detail shadow effect on my text, but not too much. And I like this. So I'm going to click OK. I'm going to move this a little. And now you want to duplicate this text. So you select your layer and then you make sure you drop it on top of the square plus icon on the bottom next to the trash can. It will create a duplicate for you. And you want to click on that text and bring that down. And you want to pick your text tool, highlight the bottom text, and then we want to change it to worship. So that is the end. So I'm going to click on both layers and I'm going to slightly shift it off the edge. So now that we have this, we want to keep adding to our text. So I'm going to select my text tool and I'm going to type in another text. So it's worship night. So I'm going to add the night. I'm going to reduce the size of our text. I'm going to type in the word night. So I'm going to highlight my text and then I'm going to choose a different font. So I'm going to look for the font that I want. And this font name is AKA Dura. So I'm just going to look for AKA Dura. So I have that and I'm going to change the font style, the font size to 122. I'm going to click enter. So I have my font. And before I set it on top of my text worship, I want to add some effects to the text. So I'm going to double click the right hand corner of my layer in the layers panel. I'm going to double click. And it will open up the layers panel. Or you can right click and also, I'm going to show you, you can right click and also choose blending options. It takes you to the same location. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a couple of styles. So I'm going to add a bevel and I'm going to add a contour. I'm also going to add a stroke and I'm going to add a sateen, a gradient layer and also a shadow. I want to show you all the different things that I changed so that you can do the same thing for yours. If you go to the bevel and emboss, if you double click on that, you see that it opens up the property for that particular uh, layer style. So as you can see, for the bevel, I use inner bevel and I use smooth for the technique. And when it came to the depth, it was at 22. My size was at 13 and my softener was at 15. And then as you can see, when it comes down to the angle, I left it at 90. My altitude is at 30. And then the gross contour, if you notice, I used a different contour, which is on the bottom here. So you can just see it's called round. So you just make sure you select round. Your highlight mode is darkened and the color is white. My opacity is around 91. 
you can change it depending on your preference. And my shadow mode is multiply. So this is just the look I'm going for. You might want to change it slightly and that is all preference. So if you know me, you know that I'm cool with that. It's your design. So whatever you want to do is up to you. So the next one is contour. And under contour, I have my range at 50. And when you move down to stroke, you can see that the stroke around the text, I have it at five pixels and the position is outside and the blend mode is normal. My opacity, I left at 100. And as you can see, the fill type color is white. So just take a note of that. When you go down to sateen, you see that the blend mode is purple. So you just make sure that you change the color to purple. My opacity, I didn't want the purple to be too much. So I took it down to 73. My angle, I left that at 90. My distance is at 61. And my size is at 86, sorry, 68. And notice the contour, notice the shape so you can select the correct one. And then the next one is gradient overlay. Now the gradient overlay is very simple. You can see the type of gradient that I chose. So you can have the same thing. And my blend mode is normal. Angle is at 93. You can take it to 90 degrees. And my scale is at 60%. Now the last one is your drop shadow. My drop shadow is all preference. You can play with it. If you want it less, you can reduce your shadow if you don't want it too much. As you can see, I just changed my shadow. I think I prefer this. So I'm gonna stick with this. So you can see that my angle is at 90, opacity 71. When it comes to the distance, I have it at 36. My spread is at 25 and my size of my shadow is 38. And then when it comes down to the quality, the noise, I kept it at 0%. So that is it for all the properties that go into making this cool text effect. So I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to move my text. I'm going to set it on top of worship right there. I love it where it is. OK, so the next thing that we want to do is to go ahead and add our date. So I'm going to click on this text tool and I'm going to type in my date. So it's going to be on the 26th. And guys, this is really not happening. It's just a tutorial, just so you know it, in case you are around here, okay? <laughs> so I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to change that font style to geometry. So it's geometry. 3415. Um, if you already know, I use this font a lot, so you should almost be familiar. So I'm going to click on my text tool and we want to add a text to the top. So I'm going to make up something. Yeah, I'm going to. So I'm going to say Nevada. And I'm going to highlight. We want to change that to human. I've used this font before too. So you might be familiar with it. So this is human ST521. And you want, we want to change the size to, let's say, 25 for now. Let's see how it works. I'm going to increase it. So I'm going to do something like that or actually reduce it. To where it was 25. I'm going to double click to deselect and I'm going to make sure I have that layer selected and we want to open it up, spread it out so it looks something like that. I'm going to collapse this and I want to add a shadow effect. So I'm going to click on my text, double click in this area and then we're just going to add a drop shadow it looks a little bit too much. So I'm going to double click inside and we're going to reduce the distance. And I'm going to collapse that. So I have something like this. You can even change the color to the, um, you can even change the color to the honey mustard if you want, but I'm just going to keep it like this. 
And this is good so far. So the next thing we want to do is to add in some of the RTs that are going to be featured for this particular event. So as you can see, I already have images in my folder, which like I always do, I'm going to have all of these images available in the description below. There'll be a link so you can download the images and follow along. And hey, if you want to share your final image with me, I will be glad to give you a shout out on my next tutorial. So let's move along. So I'm going to open the folder and I'm going to click on this image to bring it in. I'm just going to drop it here. And I'm going to scale it like that. And I'm going to show you something. There are two ways of doing this. And we typically, you will normally double click on this, go to where the image is, double click at the end to open the layer style. And then you can add uh, a stroke effect. So if I add a stroke effect, this is what I get. But if you don't want to have a curved end instead of this. You want a sharp end. There's another way to do it. So I'm going to show you that so that you can have both options. In case you prefer this way, you can do it. But I want to show you the other way that I prefer. It makes it look a little bit more modern. So let's do that. So this is option A. I'm going to cancel it and I'm going to delete this photo. So I'm going to go back to my images and instead of dropping it into my working file, I'm going to right click and I'm going to open this in another window in Photoshop. So once your image is open, the first thing you want to do is to crop your image to the size that you want. So I'm just going to click on my crop tool and if you're not sure what I just did, this is the crop tool right there. And I'm just going to scale it the way I want. I'm going to double click to the scale that I want. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go to image and then canvas size. And notice that my layer is still locked and it still works. I'm going to change the width. I'm going to make it 30 and the height 30. And you can, you have the option of changing whatever um, stroke you want around your, um, your image. So I'm going to go for a white, which I've already changed. So you can double click and change it to whatever color you want. I'm going to click OK and then click OK. And as you can see, a border has been created around my image. Control D to deselect. And I can just select my, oh, you want to make sure that you unlock your image. And now we can drag our image into our working file. And notice that it comes with the border and it's, the border is square. It doesn't have any curves to it. So I'm just going to hold one end and I'm just going to scale it just like that. So as you can see, this is not so visible because of the size, but in the case where you have a bigger image where the boundary is more pronounced, you will see the difference between the square and the curved um, ends. So I just wanted to show you in case you were, you were thinking about doing something like that. We're going to go back to the folder and I'm going to right click I'm going to right click on this one and we are going to open in Photoshop. I'm going to keep it just like that. I'm not going to crop anything. And this is Kirk Franklin, in case you didn't know. <laughs> so I'm just going to go to canvas size and I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to do 30 and 30. Now that we have this all set, I am going to move this down just a little, something like that. And that is perfect. So I'm going to collapse the other ones that we don't need. I'm going to close this one as well. 
So we have these three artists that are going to be at this big event. So we want to go ahead and add the time and also the location. So I'm going to go to my folder and I have, I'm going to just bring in the location icon and I'm just going to drag it in here. And I think with my move tool, I'm going to move this down. It's going to take a while because it's beneath. So I'm just going to drag it myself with my mouse. I'm going to move it up just a little. I'm going to set it here. And I'm going to double click to deselect. Now with my move tool, I'm going to click within my canvas and I'm going to type in and we're going to change the font style to the BBUS bold and I'm going to close in the spacing and then we also want to increase our text. We're going to take it to let's say 36 I'm going to move it and set it right there. I'm going to zoom in. We go into, oops, we're going to rescale this a little. I'm going to double click to deselect. I'm going to move my location up a little. And this is going to be right there. So now we want to add the address location. So I'm just going to add to this. I'm just going to type it in and I'm going to select highlight that we're going to reduce we're going to choose a different font it's the same it's in the same family but we're going to reduce the font instead of bold we are going to choose like book which is a little bit less in terms of boldness so I'm going to keep it to books and we're going to reduce the size for that one we're going to take it down to 18. So I'm going to highlight my address to make it a little bit more prominent. So we're going to choose regular. So it's a little bit more bolder. I'm going to use my space bar and I'm going to space it out just a little bit. So we have something like this. I'm going to move the Tacoma a little bit away from the icon. So now that we have this, we want to add the time. So I'm going to go back to my folder. I have an icon for uh, the time. Oops, it's very huge. So I'm going to rescale this. And I'm going to move it down. I'm going to zoom in so we can see it. I'm going to rescale. I'm going to collapse the property. I'm going to rescale this. Zoom in and set it right there. I'm going to double click to deselect. So what we are going to do is that we want to add a color on top of this to change it. So I'm going to go to my adjustments and solid color. And I want to choose like honey mustard i'm gonna click ok and i'm going to press on my alt and then clip it to the layer beneath and as you can see it applies it to it and even if you want before you apply your color you can actually make sure that your foreground color is the same color as the icon for your direction so you already know you have it and when you go to adjustment to choose the solid color, it will automatically choose that. So now that we have this, I want to go ahead and move it a little. So it's centered. And now I'm going to make a copy of my text below. Make a duplicate, move that on top.
All right. So the next thing I'm going to do is obviously let people know where they can get tickets. So I'm going to click on my text tool and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to choose the geometry and I'm just going to click. Oops. So you want to make sure you click away from your big text. And I'm going to reduce this to 36 for now. I'm going to type in. So we want to first of all highlight this, change the color to the honey mustard. And I'm going to rescale it just like that. And we're going to set it up. But I'm going to first of all right click, right click and add a drop shadow. And I'm going to move it up and set it right there. And notice that everything wasn't selected. So I'm going to make sure that the color is applied to everything. And I'm going to move this up right there. So people know exactly where to go to get tickets. All right. And as I said, this is really not happening, guys. So please don't go looking up this event. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go to my folder and I'm going to drag in this image and I'm going to set it right there. Something like this. And what we are going to do, we want to go to, you want to make sure you're on the right layer for that and you want to then go to change the blend mode we want to change it to screen screen basically hides everything that is black and only shows anything that is bright in your image so now that we have this i'm going to take my eraser tool and i want to erase around our uh, light source so you want to make sure that your cup layer is unchecked so you can see your eraser head. And I just want to erase around it so that the line that we see goes away. So we have a very smooth light effect. So now that we have this, I'm going to use my move tool and I'm going to set it somewhere here, just like that. And I'm going to do something a little bit different and I'm going to repeat this twice. So I'm going to rescale this and I'm going to set it back right there. So this is what I want to do. I want to add a little bit more richness to the background. So with this layer selected, I'm going to go ahead and add an adjustment level. It's going to be a solid color. And I'm going to choose like an orange, like this orange. I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to click on my Alt and then clip that to my image. And as you can see, it gives me this cool effect. But I don't want it on the text. I want it behind the text. So I'm going to select these two. And I'm going to move it down right in this area I'm going to zoom out so you can see it more and I'm going to rescale this light effect so it spreads more so now that I have this I want to double click on this the color I want it to be a little bit more deeper so as you can see as I change the color you see that it changes the the background color so I want to keep it more in the orange um, section. So I'm going to click OK. And I like the way it looks so far. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to rescale it just a little. I like the way it looks. So I'm going to make a duplicate of the spotlight that we brought in. And I'm going to make sure that I'm going to move the copy all the way up, first of all, to the top. And we want to go back to the other one. Notice that after I made the copy, the orange that was clipped to the lower was, um, it went back to its original, uh, it was unclipped. So you hold down your alt and then you clip it back. Now we want to go up to the top 
layer. And we want to move this light sauce to the top of this uh, text. I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to rescale it just a little bit. And we want to move it and set it right there again. And that is it. If you want to make another duplicate and set that on this end to give it a little bit more of an interest, that is fine. I did that. Um, so you can repeat the same thing or you can keep it um, in just one location. So what I want to do is that I want to increase uh, the spread of my solid color in the middle. So I'm going to double click on my color first of all. I want to make it a little bit more lighter on the orangey side. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to click on our light, the layer beneath, and I'm going to increase it just like that. And now I'm going to add one more element to complete our tutorial. And that is a bokeh light effect. And this, you can just get an image online and apply it. But I want to show you how you can do it yourself. So you want to make sure that, first of all, we create a layer right on top of our green layer that we, our right on top of the orange layer that we had. So it's in the background of our text. And I'm going to pick my brush. Notice my foreground is white. You want to make sure that the, your hardness is somewhere at 81. And I want to make sure my brush is not too big so you can just gauge. You want to go back to your Windows brush settings. You want to check your dynamic. You want to check your scatter. And you also want to check your transfer. You want to make sure you have your smooth checked. And when I go into dynamic shape, you realize that I have my size jitter at 100. My minimal diameter is at zero, angle zero, roundness zero. And when it comes to the scatter, I have my scatter all the way to 1,000%. And then my count is at one. My count jitter is also at zero. My transfer, as you can see, I have my transparent at 100. My flow jitter is at 100. So you can see the difference. And I want to keep the effect very light. And then you want to make sure you check on your smooth. So once I have that, I'm going to collapse this property. And I'm just going to do one sweep like that. So with this, I'm just going to move it up. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to move it up somewhere here. And then I'm going to just decrease my opacity on that. So it's not so much, but at the same time, we have this effect happening to our background. I'm going to decrease it. So you see it, but it's not too much. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my subject and I want to make sure that my opacity, I bring it all the way up. So you can still see your subject. You can still see the book here effect also happening in the background and i think this is marvelous okay <laughs> okay so i'm going to zoom in now that we are done we want to have one simple image that we can now begin to increase the saturation the vibrance and contrast and all of that in our image so to group all your images, all you need to do, you want to, you need to select your last image, go all the way up, hold down your shift, select your top image as well. So everything is selected. Then you want to go to your folder icon below, and then you want to click on it. It will group everything for you. Now with that layer selected, you want to hold down your shift, alt, control, and then Press E on your keyboard. Photoshop will generate one file for you. So now you can take that one file, go to Filter, Camera Raw Filter, 
And now we can begin to see how we can enrich our final image. So as you can see, I'm just increasing the saturation. I don't want to take it too much, the vibrance. I can bring it down just a little. And I want to play with the contrast. So we have something like this. The highlights, I want to take it down a little. My shadows, I'm taking it down so it shows my subject in the background. And then I'm doing something with my white. So you can see that every little slider adds to your finish elements. So depending on what you want, if you want to increase the exposure, you can or take it down just a little while you increase your contrast. I'm going to increase my exposure a little. And I'm just going to click OK. I'm not going to play with the other elements as well. I'm just going to go ahead and click OK. And as you can see, this looks really good. So if I show you the before I added the camera raw effect, this is really nice without any additional uh, touch. But if you want that punch, then you add the camera raw effect. And I really like this. So this is the before and this is the after. So I hope you guys love this tutorial and it's something that you are going to try. As always, if you send it to me, I will give you a shout out. I will showcase you in the next tutorial or the tutorial after. Enjoy doing this tutorial. Till next time, please be safe. Bye.